some of my favorite videos on YouTube are deconversion stories. And even when I talk to Christians, I enjoy hearing their conversion stories. Because it gives me an insight into what it takes to convert or deconvert a person. And so, in that spirit, I thought that I would record my own deconversion story in as much detail as I can remember. I think I've touched on this a little bit in, in much older videos, but I think the subject deserves more attention than I've given it so far. Alright, so generally these things start with how we were raised, what we had originally. So, uh, my family when I was a kid went to uh, a Catholic church I believe it was called St. Mary's in Ponca City, Oklahoma and it, we, we weren't especially raised strictly Catholic I mean, my parents were strict in general but they weren't what I would call overly dogmatic about Christianity, I guess because we obediently believed what we were told because we didn't know anything else. Church was not a fun experience. Anyone out there who has been to a Catholic church or who has seen the Crackergate video or the video that became Crackergate, you know, basically what you see there is Mass. It's a lot of Stand up, sit down, kneel, stand up, sit down, stand up, kneel, sit down. It's, it's Simon Says, basically. And for my three sisters and I, it was torture. I mean, we all had ants in our pants. We wanted to get up and run or go back to bed. And, yeah, we got in a lot of trouble over our behavior in church, but... I don't see how they could have really expected any better from us. And, you know, when I was in church and I was learning about all the silly rituals they have and the sacraments, as they call them, uh, it was all very confusing to me. And I didn't know why they did all these things. I remember particularly one thing this little like box that they have up up front in the stage area or whatever they might have in different places in different churches but it was this thing where they said that God stayed in and like that's where he was in the church and I thought really I wanted to open the little doors that were in the front but they said no don't open it I'm like what is he gonna get out I don't know. I, that was one of the first really silly things that I thought about the Catholic Church. And so I believed what I was told, um, not simply because it was how we were expected to behave, but also because it answered questions that I had about the world. You know, why does it rain? Oh, God did it. Why are there rainbows? Oh, God did it. We had this little, uh, well, we had a children's Bible that I read the little stories, and it was all their little uh, Bible stories censored for children. And I thought that by reading this thing and believing what it said, that I was being a good Christian and therefore a good person. It was just reality for me. I. It didn't occur to me that there were people of other religions, but you know the, the possibility of it was just didn't exist because it was my world, and that was fine. I don't remember exactly when I first heard about other religions, but it's not something that shocked me. I was never, you know, one of the. I was never a fundy. Except maybe for a little while, just before my deconversion, when I really started to kind of think about it and understand the religion, but we're not there yet. The first major change, I would say, that came to my beliefs 
was when I was about 15, 16, um, I started questioning everything, of course, like you're supposed to. Uh, just defiance of authority. I had, I've always kind of had issues with authority ever since I could think for myself, and I think that's a really positive thing. Everyone should question and defy authority. I realized at some point that I had never seen real evidence that there is a God, a Satan, a heaven, or a hell. And of course it was the unpleasant aspects that I first started to really question. I stopped believing in a hell before I stopped believing in heaven, simply because hell is unpleasant and heaven is supposed to be pleasant. And so, to kind of to clarify things, to clarify my own questions about Christianity, I started to actually listen during church, and that made a huge difference. There were a lot of things that I liked about the sermons, you know, the love your neighbor and you know all those things that everyone knows is good in the Bible, the do unto others. Yeah, I liked those sermons, and I would go to church gladly and listen to those. But when it came to believing that people are basically sinful and that they deserve eternal torment, uh, that's when I just lost my credulity. Because another story I had been brought up with was the story of Anne Frank and about how she never hated the Nazis even though they were hunting her down and they eventually killed her. I thought, wow, how much strength it must take to not hate the people who are currently, or who you're hiding from and who hate you. And it's, it's a very Christian message, I think, in, I guess, in the more pleasant sense of Christian. Now, I haven't actually read the Diary of Anne Frank, but I've seen movies, and I know the basic gist of it. The little details I don't think are important. Basically, she was a very naive girl who just refused to hate the Nazis. And that seemed to be the essence of Jesus' message, which I liked. But the bottom line was this Prince of Peace, as they call him, was basically threatening everyone with eternal torment if they don't believe, or if they didn't believe, that he is the son of Yahweh. Which means you also have to believe in Yahweh. And I thought, well, that's not very nice. It's not very Christ-like. Or maybe it is, and that's the problem with the idea of things being Christ-like, being a good thing. So with that, at the age of about 16, I declared myself an atheist. And I started to kind of look for a God in nature. You know, I still...